Dylan, welcome to the Grin Gets Real podcast. I'm really excited to have you on so that we can dive into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, the acronym BFCM. So welcome. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. Now, before we dive into just kind of how you you or the listeners can get the most out of just kind of their email and their SMS strategy when it comes to BFCM, I'd love for you to just kind of lay out that groundwork of your area of expertise and more specifically, why email and SMS? Tell me why this is like your hill. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, and that's exactly... I'll just tell the story of how I started it because that's why this became that hill that, you know, I'll die on and I've been preaching for for years now. So, I started Wave Break back in 2016 as just like a freelancer or consultant. What I saw at the time was a lot of brands were starting to really take off on Instagram. So like that was kind of the era of like movement watches and it was like Instagram was yeah. at its like peak and like all these really cool brands were popping up. It was really cool to buy from e-commerce. Um and I basically saw them, all these brands growing. And I was like, oh, I want to be a part of that. I had a design background. So um, at the time, what I ended up doing was I knew everybody was running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, um, but most people were just sending them to their website. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do landing pages for these high growth brands and help them you know, optimize for more conversions, basically do conversion rate optimization with these landing pages. Um, and so that's how, that's how I started out. Um, and things were going really well. I uh, was working with some really great clients. Um, and then uh, one of my larger clients, uh, like the main client at the time, what ended up happening was larger companies started, larger brands started to enter the space and drive up yeah. the cost of ads. So they were growing really fast. And then overnight, their ad costs like double tripled overnight because like the Nikes, the Hurleys, the Billabongs started to get into Facebook and just drive the cost up literally overnight. Um, and I remember them calling me and being like, Hey, like, you know, you know, we're not profitable at all anymore. We can't even send traffic to our site, let alone need you to optimize these landing pages. And so I was like, Oh crap, that sucks. Um, and so I kind of went back to the drawing board and like working with those brands, I started to look deeper into their marketing mix. And it was basically like, you know, 99% Instagram and Facebook at the time. Um, yeah. And so that's when I really saw the gap for email and like SMS really wasn't big at that time. I'll say SMS really started to take off in like late 2018, early 2019. Um, and because I didn't have a traditional retail or e-commerce background, I ended up taking a new approach to email, really like breathing new life into the channel and like seeing like, okay, here's what's working really well on social. What if we did creative similar to that on email? Um, and for the cl first client that I worked with on email, I uh, took email, increased the revenue from email by like 5x within 60 days. On that first client, I was like, okay, I think I think we might have something here because they even switched from another agency. Um, yeah. And so from there, just continued to optimize and refine our methodology, build out a great team. And then today, Waybreak's a boutique agency. We're 18 people. Uh, we run an optimized email and SMS marketing for leading brands, um, you know, all the way up to publicly traded organizations and, you know, still working with those high growth startups that we started out with. Uh, but, you know, just seeing that and then following the trend even today, you know, why do I double down on email and SMS? And that's all we do. It's because, you know, ad costs are continuing to get more expensive. The, the economy, you know, say what you want. You know, every expert has an opinion, but it is getting more difficult. Consumers are more aware of the money they're spending. They're still spending it. Um, but in terms of, you know, profitability as a brand, like you got to get more out of your existing customers. And there's no channel better to do that than email and SMS. That's also as affordable and as high ROI, uh, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get into later, but yeah, that's a background on me. That's why email and SMS, uh, it affected me personally. And I know a lot of brands too, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, I Today. like that. I also, what I find really interesting about it is one, some people, yes, I would say this. Some people think that email is dead, like email marketing. Oh, for is sure. dead. It is all about the social. And I, I honestly feel like SMS is very up and coming, but you've paired them together. So, you know, question one is, you know, what do you say to those people who say, well, e-marketing is dead? Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, sometimes even in like a webinar I did recently, I even said email is dead. Like you really do need both together. It's just like any marketing channel, like, you know, the best practices are always evolving every single week. Um, and today the best practice for communicating with your existing customers, it's email and SMS together. I mean, we're looking at, you know, sure you can drive revenue with one or the other, 
um, and that works, but you're going to leave a lot of money on the table. And as ad costs continue to rise, you know, there's shifts in the economies in the economy. Um, you know, if you are only doing one or the other, you're going to leave money on the table. You know, let's say yeah. emails doing 25% of your revenue with no SMS, you know, you can launch a best in class SMS program and add another 10% of new revenue. And, you know, you get into debates with people all the time, like, okay, is that new revenue truly incremental? And like, it's not perfect. And, you know, it never is. And you're never going to be able to track yeah, it perfectly. Nothing, nothing's ever perfect when it comes to a yeah. marketing strategy. But what I always tell people is like the difference with SMS is like it is new revenue because the open rates are so high. Um, you know, for most people, it's like we don't like to have that red dot above messages. You know, if you're appearing on someone's lock screen, that's a lot better. Most emails aren't going there or, you know, it's with a ton of emails. People aren't getting as many texts. Um, and because the open rates are higher with SMS, you are cutting through the noise versus you know, maybe 80% of people, 70% of people, even if you have really great open rates, like they're still not opening the email and even seeing it. Whereas on SMS, you know, even if you just say like, oh, it's not 99% open rate, but even an 80% open rate, I mean, that's still four times over four times what the industry standard is for like a retail open rate. Um, so it is new revenue and it is being left on the table and then working them together, you know, it's going to drive more revenue because I think no one's going to argue that like more touch points you have with a customer or yeah. potential customer, the more success that you'll have and the more, you know, you can communicate with them to address objections or get them to make their next order, just like not forget about you. Um, you know, both together is really where we see like the most revenue driven. And that's really where we like to focus is like, how do we maximize revenue and not just, you know, any buzzword, but like actually, you know, drive impact to the top and bottom line. So what is that kind of, because what I'm hearing you say is that it's about um, email and SMS working together. Some would say it's almost like ha that's a bit of like that omni-channel strategy, right? Like what you see in email is something that you should see in SMS, but paint, paint the picture of what that Venn diagram is from a strategy perspective. So if I'm sit, if I'm at a brand and I'm trying to lead that strategy and I've got email SMS, like what does that look like in execution as far as like, I don't, like, you know, setting up a campaign, let's use BFCM as that, that example sure. when it comes to email marketing and SMS, let's give the people what they want. Like, what does that look like from a campaign perspective? Does my email go out first and then the SMS and how often do both of those kind of happen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the biggest difference with email and SMS is the creative. Um, so okay. with SMS, it's more like a tweet. So you're limited in the amount of content you can include. Um, whereas like, you know, an email, you can do a pretty long email. Um, you know, brands like Old Navy, like if you would print that out, it's probably going to be like 20, 30 pages long of, yeah. of, you know, of an email. Whereas an SMS, like even Old Navy, they're limited to an image and then basically a tweet. And so that's the biggest difference. And the way we think about it is just like any good copywriter would. It's like, you know, using the highest impact copy on both channels. And, you know, ultimately with email, you can be a little bit more aggressive just because consumers are used to it. And like when you look at attrition and people unsubscribing, like you can email daily during that period and not see a huge impact. Obviously, people are going to unsubscribe, but you can email daily, um, you know, whereas SMS, like that's not something you're going to want to do every day necessarily if you're focused on, you know, list hygiene and list health. I mean, we've even worked with brands who've tried to send daily or, you know, they were a client and they wanted to send daily and we push back on SMS. Um, they wanted to send daily SMS. And so we push back and then, you know, you check in six months later and they go from making, you know, thousands of dollars per campaign, let's say five grand per campaign to like $400 per campaign because they just like completely like, you know, drove the list into the ground at the expense of short-term revenue. So the way we think about it is your most important messages, the one you want to cut through the noise, like we focus those, um, that should definitely be an SMS. And then for email, you can kind of do a little bit of everything. You can do more yeah. educational content. You can do more long form content. I will say like in terms of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and I'm sure we'll get into more details around that too. Like you can be more aggressive just because like there's more volume and it's kind of expected. And you really are, if you are doing your best sale of the year, like if you're reminding people in the morning with a text and in the evening with a text, some people would say that's a lot, but if it is your best sale of the year and somebody missed it in the morning, um, and they want to see it in the evening, like it's not necessarily a bad thing can actually help people who are really fans of the brand. Um, and so, I mean, tactically, we're typically sending a lot more volume on email, but then when we're thinking about SMS, we're sending the highest, um, you know, revenue generating messages. So like 
even though we are sending less, the impact is higher. Um, and then just, you know, in terms of timing, sometimes we'll send them together. Sometimes we'll send them at different times. We're always testing that for our clients. Like, um, you know, two touch where you're sending both at once. That could be interesting if there's two notifications on their lock screen at once, for example, on mobile. Uh Um, you know, and then the other thing is like, okay, send them the SMS first or send them the email first. If they don't convert there, you can follow up with an SMS. They're more likely to see, um, you know, we typically, I think lean towards sending them both at the same time. Um, but you, you know, you can experiment and really test to see what order makes better. Cause even abandoned cart, like, you know, 70% carts are abandoned and you can just recover 10% more of those it's really big for brands, um, you know, and the right timing and the cadence of your email and SMS working together, you know, can drive a 10% additional recovery to abandoned carts. Um, so it is important to like test and optimize too. I love that. So um, if I had to synthesize what it is that you're saying, email is more about volume or um, you're allowed to have a higher volume of touch points when it comes to email sends that you go out and SMS should be used from a tactical perspective perspective. Man, I'm tongue tied this morning. Um, From a tactical perspective, it should be a little bit more strategic. So what does that look like then in execution for my big sale for Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Am I using my email for, hey, it's coming, it's happening, it's two days away, then SMS, it's two days away. Okay, it's happening now. And then SMS is like, don't miss out, don't miss out, don't miss out so that you're strategically using SMS to really drive people to make that sale? Yeah, for sure. And it really, it really depends. And in terms of like what we see for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategy, Mm -hmm. um, and what's really effective is like, there really is a correct and incorrect cadence of like email and SMS and even promotional calendar. And having that right cadence, like we've tested across clients, like even from when you start your sale, like you can drive up to 41% more more revenue um, with the right cadence. And so like in terms of like what we're typically doing with clients, it depends on how aggressive they want to be when the sale begins. But like what we've seen over the last couple of years, starting in 2020, brands have started their sales earlier. Um, so as early as like first week of November this year in October, we've got, um, you know, another prime day that was successful previously in that time in years past. Um, and so like brands are starting sales earlier. And, you know, when we look at our data and check your brand, if you haven't tested this, you know, maybe you have a different answer, but from what we're seeing is like the earlier you start, the more you make, um, and you still see sales, a a spike on black Friday and cyber Monday themselves, even if you don't change the offer. Uh, some people are going to wait and hold out, but typically what we'll do is, you know, we'll start And like I said, it depends on the client, but you know, it's good yeah. to do a teaser. Like our biggest deal of the year is coming. So people can get excited about it. You know, if you're a brand that gets sell, sold out of inventory really quickly, like you probably want to give your best customers or really any customer a heads up. Uh, same goes for if it's a gift. Um, we'll typically start to ramp that early November. We're probably not sending every day that early, but, you know, every other day or every couple days for email and then SMS layering on, you know, potentially every send or every other send, depending on, you know, how aggressive we're going to be and how aggressive the client wants to be with the calendar. And then heading into Black Friday, Cyber Monday or like Cyber Weekend, that's really when we up the ante and we get a lot more aggressive. So, you know, we'll send, you know, up to two times a day, typically, you know, as much as three times a day sometimes. And the reasoning for that is, you know, on the email channel, you could have the best subject line in the world, but if you're not appearing at the top of the inbox and every brand that anybody's ever subscribed to is emailing them, you know, by 10 a.m., your 9 a.m. email could be 200 emails down in their inbox. And that's why increasing volume is really important too. Um, and that's yeah. why starting your sale early might make sense too, especially this year, because, you know, you want to capture that wallet share. People have a fixed budget on what they can spend on gifts and, you know, for Christmas and all these things. And when that budget is spent, for the most part, it's gone. And so being early um, is really important. And then in terms of SMS, we're layering that on top two of those most important messages, you know, up to two times per day, but I'd say mostly once per day to cut through the noise. And sometimes if a brand wants to be a little bit less aggressive, we'll even say, hey, take a break on the Sunday after Black Friday before Cyber Monday and then start again on Monday. Um, But from what we've seen is like being more aggressive doesn't hurt the brand. It typically helps it and helps you drive more performance. Um, and sure, you have some unsubscribes here and there and um, that sort of thing. But the, the revenue that you generate is going to balance that out. And, um, you know, it's going to end up better off than if you didn't send that email or send that text. 
Well, and it's a really good point. I subscribe to way more email newsletters than I do to SMS. I think I've got about four or five SMS notifications that I get. I ignore them until I need them. And then I'm like, oh, it's really quick. And then I can click and purchase because it it removes those friction points for me because I'm not always in front of my computer and I'm not always checking my email, but I'm always checking my text messages. Um, For sure. Unless you're like crazy and you have like, I don't know how some people do it. I couldn't do it. And you see like, they have like, you know, 397 on red text. I guess it gets to a point where like, you just like give up. But I I mean, that is not, I could, I couldn't do that. (laughs) I love that you said that. That's actually what it looks like in my voicemail and my missed calls. So or like email inbox, like you, you're always going to see someone with like 300 emails on that mail icon. Because it's so many, it's really so many. Yeah. I mean, like, because to your point, email is often leveraged, not just for the sales, right? It's not just for, yeah, come buy this right now. It is a lot of post-purchase, right? It's a, it's a lot of follow-up. It's a lot of education. It's a lot of like how-tos. It, it's so much more information. And I still want to be able to keep that information. But to your point, to be able to like cut through that noise, you do need to kind of leverage both, you know, both of them and be really strategic. I have a couple of questions. I have a couple of follow-up questions to that. One of them really pertains to just kind of the type of content that you're posting on there. I do think that influencers and creators have a really great advantage of creating the content that really resonates with an audience. So what do you say to that content creation, that image that's used? Do you use an image with SMS? And do you use that same image with email marketing? Is it more than just an image? Is it a review? Like, tell me about the content for something like a BFCM strategy. Yeah, for sure. And that's a great question. I I think the biggest difference when it comes to BFCM content and creative, and we've seen like even the right creative strategy, you know, with our clients, like just to paint a picture of how important creative is from not just a design perspective, but like the content you include and the type of content you include, like you're saying, we had a client who, I mean, we still work with them today. We work with them since 2020. And then last year we're like, okay, we're going to breathe new life into the creative. They wanted to switch things up a little bit. And so we basically established new brand guidelines for their email channel. And just by like Mm -hmm. up leveling the creative and shifting that and, you know, taking it and making the brand, like they, they really modernized the brand. And by doing that, We didn't change the cadence. We didn't change the number of emails we were sending. We sent the same type of emails. Uh, We saw an increase of revenue within a six-month period of 68% just from changing the creative. And it's just like Facebook. And I don't know why people, you know, don't, they don't always put two and together, two and two together for email. It's like, we need great Facebook creative. You know, we need the site dialed in. It's got, you know, we'll spend $500,000 on a new logo and branding. But then when it comes to email, it's like, you know, it either looks good and it's not designed to convert or like it doesn't look good at all. Or like you've got, you know, sequences set up from 2019 or 2018 and like, don't go back and look at those because like, it's just, you know, it'll make you cringe. Um, But yeah, I mean, what we're seeing Black Friday, Cyber Monday is like, it should feel, it should really grab your attention in the inbox, um, which is really important. And so if there's a creator you work with that's, you know, really close with the brand and represents that brand really well, if you can b- pull them into the email, that's going to work really well to capture attention because, yeah. you know, it's going to, it's going to stand out against the, you know, everybody else just throwing off the 50% off discount or whatever your offer may be big and bold. And you should definitely do that. Like less content is more on black Friday. Like you should have a great offer. It's black Friday. People know what they're doing. They know what time of year it is. Like, you're not going to trick them. You're not going to convince them to buy. Like, they're either going to buy or they're not. So just kind of put it out there and get them to your site and away from the competition as quickly as possible. So, like, use that creative to be eye-catching, whether it's using, you know, influencer or creator content, like you're saying, that works really well. Yeah. Uh, but then get them onto your site and away from your direct and indirect competition that's also in the inbox. Because, you know, it's so easy to get distracted and, you know, yeah. go back to the inbox. You, even if you want to buy, you forget, you get another notification. So, you know, keeping it short and sweet after grabbing their attention and then having a really direct call to action, even as simple as shop now to get them to the site, uh, we yeah. see work really well. Less is more, but it's got to be good too. You know, it's like yeah, all, yeah. You know, simple is hard to do, but when you do it, it works the best. So what do you say to those brands 
Because it, to your point, like BFCM is so great because you're looking for the deals and that's where people are going to shop. And for some brands, it's an opportunity to expose a consumer to who you are by trying or having them try because you've got this really good deal. What do you say to the brands that don't heavily discount? Is there still a place for a strategy for them, you know, during BFCM? Yeah, absolutely. So the client I was mentioning who we improved their creative uh, and saw the 68% revenue increase uh, over that six month period, we, they don't run any Black Friday, Cyber Monday. They don't run any sale at all. The, part of the ethos of their brand is we don't discount because we want to make our product as accessible to everybody as possible all year round. And so for them, we do a couple yeah. things. Um, you know, one, we try to lean into like seasonal merchandise if that exists. Um, so, you know, leaning into gift giving is big. And then, you know, on Black Friday itself, we really lean into that messaging to build the brand. Um, and it really resonates well with the customers when we say, you know, no Black Friday sale. People click on the email, they go into the email and then they read it and we explain why we don't do it. Um, you know, and it's because we want to keep it affordable and accessible all year round. And like the customers really appreciate that they respond and they're like, Hey, like, thanks for doing this. Like, it's so unique. Um, and so, you know, if that is who you are, like, yeah, lean into it. It works really well. You could still drive a lot of revenue in Q4. So, you know, thinking about gifting and thinking about, you know, as you head into December beyond Black Friday, Cyber Monday, shipping yeah. deadlines around gifting and gift cards and different things that you can do there. Um, you know, and also, you know, if you have seasonal merchandise, that's really helpful. Like I said, like, you know, any kind of like holiday gear or bundles or things you can do. Bundles are a really good thing to get people into, um, as well. So maybe you don't have to discount directly, but you can throw some things together and do something special there. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't have to do a sale if it's, if that's not what your brand does. I love the idea of bundles because I think that tis the season. Uh, yeah. You have so many presents to buy and I'm a pretty, well, not to toot my own horn, but I would say that I'm a pretty thoughtful gift giver. So I want to think of something that's really unique, but then there are those people that are just like the go-to people where you're like, oh, I have to get something. Maybe it's a white elephant gift, you know, or maybe it's, you know, something for a coworker or whatnot, right? Like those bundles are really great for that. So I love that idea of, you know, if you're not going to discount, think outside of the box, what can you put together that is of value for you? your end consumer. Now, I did say that I had a couple of follow-up questions in regards to that. I asked you one of them in regards to the content. So like the content was the imagery. We talked about leveraging potentially influencers and creator content to be able to have that emotional connection uh, via email and then SMS. But the other thing, I'm, and I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are on this, is when it comes to the email content, is it... Um, how many words should I use? And I know that must sound like a really ridiculous question, but I get a lot of emails and it fluctuates between really long paragraphs. I'm not going to read it. I, um, I have this belief that you bullet point it, you bold it, you make it like visual, you make your words visually appealing. If you're not going to have an image in there. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm very opinionated on this. And oh, like I love most it. <laughs> yeah. Although most marketers aren't going to like my answer. So, I mean, the answer is it varies and you should definitely test it. And then I'll go yeah. into the, uh, I'll go into the best practices. Uh, but, I, I, but I'll share specific examples too, because it's like, you know, Oh, test it. You got to opt it. Like the, um, yeah. so like specific examples. Uh, so we had a client, they sell, um, a very visual product. So think like, okay. um, I'm trying to think like nail polish, nail wraps, that sort of thing. We tested yeah. with them plain text versus creative over the course of a six month period. And we actually found that the plain text would beat out the majority of the time, the actual like creatively mm -hmm. designed emails, which is kind of crazy. They did a lot of new drops. So like featuring that type of content and then being able to show like basically being like, Hey, we just dropped a bunch of new stuff. Check it out. Being more vague about it actually drove more clicks and more revenue because they're more likely the idea is like, you know, they're going to start clicking around. And if you have a lot of SKUs, they can still find something they like, even if they're not planning on buying that versus like, you know, showing the actual product itself 
for that specific audience. And that's where it's going to vary too, like who your customer is, and that's why you have to test it, who your customer is and you know what your yeah. what types of emails you're sending. So in that case, those emails actually typically did better. However, other content for that specific client, you know, we see other content do better with creative. So, you know, maybe with a sale like like you're saying like big and bold letters and just straight to the point um works better. Uh, we have another client who it's like, you know, we've tested the same and we found actually that overall the, for automation, we see like plain text work better because it seems more personalized. They're deeper in the funnel. So like, you know, a personal touch coming from the head of support or customer success or the CEO works really well. But then overall, we see the Im- image-based creative do really well when it comes to, you know, the actual sales promotions themselves. And so that's why it's really important to test. And that's something we're always doing with our clients is optimizing those across the board. Um, But then in terms of general best practices to answer your question on like how much copy, what is the creative? It's like the creative should grab your attention and the copy should be as persuasive and say as much as possible in as few words as possible. Like it could be (laughs) as simple as Cyber Monday starts now, 50% off, ends tomorrow at midnight, shop now. And like, that's enough. You don't need a, a, a witty paragraph or something. And like, we do have brands who like, you know, we'll, we'll weave in the brand into that messaging too. So you don't have to be that direct and that generic. Um, so like if your brand has a personality, weave it into it. I'd say that's kind of like next level marketing is when you start to weave in like your brand's positioning and like value props into that content too. So like, for example, yeah. you know, si- like, you know, save 15% on the number one dermatologist recommended X, Y, Z and weaving that into the content. So you're still playing into that like really strong value prop for the brand, but you're also keeping it short and sweet without, you know, writing a whole paragraph on, you know, how it was analyzed and how that data was calculated or whatever. Like, you know, some people try to cram too much in and less is typically more as long as it's better. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You have to have something good in there, right? For sure. Well, so you've said this word countless times since we started. You said we well, gotta, you have to test it. You've done a lot of testing. We have. I feel like BFCM is right around the corner, even though it's not even the end of September. But what do you say to a brand that's like, great, listen to the podcast. I'm fully on board. Email and SMS. But do I have enough time to test? And is even BFCM a time where you should or can test? Is that an opportunity? Should you always be testing something? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the answer is like, yes and no. And if you don't have time, like that's why we exist because we think about this for our clients every month and every quarter with like, how do we do better than before? Um, but one of the biggest things that we see brands overlook, and it's not even their fault entirely, is historical data. So even if you don't have time to optimize this yeah. Black Friday, you probably shouldn't be A-B testing on Black Friday itself, um, for sure. Yeah. Like you should just commit and go for it. It risks things breaking. Like you can't test a discount. Like that's just going to be too messy. What if people get to the site, the other offer, sh- it just gets really messy. So we don't recommend that. That's why, you know, we start prepping with our clients in like July for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, because we want to know, you know, what is the best send time well in yeah. advance? What about during a holiday period? What type of subject lines do better? Are they vague? Are they direct? Is it a mix of both? Um, for the creative, like is less more, is more and more, is plain text better, is this? And yeah. so like, you know, using the sales leading up to it, whether it's 4th of July, Labor Day, back to school, Uh, you know, or even like Halloween now that we're starting to run out of time to test offers and test, it really makes a big impact. And then the other thing we do with our clients that's very overlooked for a lot of brands is looking at their historical data. So looking at past years, like where'd the revenue come from? Where were the biggest spikes? Like, oh, wow, we did like a lot of revenue on Saturday after Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and we only send one email. What happens if we send two? What happens if we layer an SMS on that? Yeah. Um, Or like, oh, it seems like people are mostly converting at this time or this window. Um, and so looking at your historical data and not just looking at it, like, I think everybody knows, like we should look at our data, but the hard part is actually doing something with it. And so that's what we'll work with clients to do is really analyze that data and do a true analysis to actually get insights from those data points and then turn them into actionable strategy for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So you're not starting from, you know, day zero again, like so many brands do every single year. They just guess again. And like this year, that's not going to work. Like the, everything is different. You know, Facebook's different. The algorithm's different. The economy is different. The consumer is different. And so like the less you guess, the better. And you have all this data that you can get those insights from. 
uh, to inform your strategy for this year. So that's typically what we recommend, you know, whether you're running out of time or not. Love that. Now we talked about uh, prepping for and starting earlier on in regards to your BFCM promotions, right? Even starting at the beginning of November, but definitely should have already been thinking about it. And we talked about like what happens during the, you know, four days of BFCM, right? That's when we're going to hit it hard. But how can we make whatever we've implemented or executed for BFCM last beyond those fab four days? Yeah. I mean, it's a great, it's a great question and it's really important. And another thing that I see overlooked by a lot of brands, um, you know, it's like September hits, you know, all summer you could be planning for Q4 and then it's not till September and October hit that like brands really get serious about, you know, what's actually going to happen. Um, and I think it's really important to extend that success as long as you can. And so a few things that we do with our clients is like, number one, automation on the back end in advance of it. So, so many brands acquire all these new customers in Q4 and then they don't do anything with it or like they get fed into a post-purchase flow from like, you know, two years ago, like I was talking about. And so in this market where LTV is super important and getting a repeat purchase is super important, like in advance of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you should have sequences set up on the back end to take those people and then convert them at when you know they're going to come back. So you look at your historical data for this too and see, oh, typically Black Friday buyers are coming back, you know, 45 days after they're coming back around the January 5th to January 15th window or something like that. Um, And so automation is important. Um, you know, thinking about December, there's still a ton of urgency to buy leading up to, you know, the hall and during the holiday season. So, you know, obviously a lot of people are buying gifts for Christmas and, you know, Hanukkah and other holidays. Um, so really leaning into urgency around shipping and discounts ending, um, you know, you can run a 12 days of Christmas. You don't even have to run a discount on the 12 days. Just like here's 12 products and feature a product every day that exposes people to more of your product catalog that might be like, oh, that might make a great gift for so-and-so. Um, and then leading into those shipping deadlines, since 2020, everybody is used to like shipping taking longer than expected. So leaning into that urgency around you're running out of time to get this as a gift is really powerful. Um, and then on Christmas Eve, you know, if you have a virtual gift card option, you can offer that to customers and subscribers as a great last minute gift. And then after Christmas, think about a get what you really wanted email where <laughs> someone who's it. a fan of the brand and maybe they got an Amazon <laughs> gift card or they got, you know, uh, a Visa gift card or something or just cash, you know, they can get whatever they want. And then in January, a lot of brands kind of fall asleep at the wheel. And yeah. what we recommend is going into a hardcore focus on retention. So getting those buyers that you acquired and they're not always the best, right? They just bought at your best discount. So they might not be your best customers, but you want to at least try to get them back. Even if you have a gift giving audience, Valentine's day is right around the corner. So if you can take those buyers that you acquired as who are buying as gifts and get them to buy again for Valentine's day, you just made that marketing go even further and email and SMS are great channels to do that because you've already acquired them. You don't have to spend more on advertising to get them back. Compared to you know Facebook, they're very affordable, um, and so that's kind of how we think about it. Automation, December campaigns, beyond that, and then in January and February, focusing on retention of those people before they're gone for good. I love all of those tips, and I also really love how much you're talking about just kind of retention and and also retargeting them as well too. Just going back to this original list that you have. I mean, the value of someone who has signed in, someone who has purchased, someone who has signed up for SMS and a newsletter to be able to continue to feed them more information about your brand, like more sales, like if this didn't interest you, maybe this, like at some point, something's going to hit home. Um, So I think that you're always increasing your odds when you have taken the time to acquire those people, even if they didn't purchase with you. So I love the optimism of having like the email list um, and the SMS list for sure. Now I've taken a ton of your time, but I've got one final question for you. And it is the prediction time question. What changes do you see happening over the next year with email and just kind of SMS marketing? Yeah, I think overall we're going to see 
email and SMS get a lot more competitive. I think it's already gotten, you know, the channels have already gotten a lot more competitive over the last couple of years because the story that I told around Facebook ads not being as effective, brands needing to diversify their marketing, finding profitability on the back end through customers who are opted into their email and SMS, like more and more brands are turning to these channels. And even today, like more and more brands have good email and SMS programs already. And so going from good to best in class is going to be the next must. It's kind of like what happened for um, media buying and Facebook ads. Like you used Uh to be able to get away with, you know, not that much. And the Facebook algorithm would do the work. It was kind of the same for email. You press send and then revenue comes in and a lot of brands are seeing that revenue get lower and lower from each send. And that's why you got to really take these channels, make them top of mind internally to go from good to great and then to best in class because the ROI is going to be there indefinitely. The channels are really affordable compared to everything else. The ROI is unreal. I think SMS specifically needs to be top of mind as we're shifting to a mobile consumer and consumers are you know, becoming really okay with SMS as a channel and getting texts from yeah. brands now versus two years ago. It was kind of like an invasion of privacy. Today, yeah. today we it's didn't not. didn't even talk about the privacy thing either. Yeah. And, not- yeah, and pri- yeah, we'll have to do a follow-up. And yeah, it's just, it's going to get more competitive. So you got to get better. And it's going to be a must as ads continue to get more expensive to find that profitability in channels like email and SMS. And even Amazon is expanding their email capabilities for merchants to keep customers coming back as of this week used to not be able to really do much with email marketing as an Amazon brand. Now they're expanding their capabilities. And the reason they explain the reason they're doing that is because they want more people coming back to Amazon and not going other places. So they're letting merchants opening that up. And so every Amazon brand sending emails now is also going to crowd the inbox because everyone's an Amazon customer and we've all opted into their emails one way or another on one of their thousands of lists that they have internally, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, as they become more competitive, you need to do more to stand out with strategy and creative. And ultimately that's where we come in. So I'm really excited to continue to bring new, fresh ideas to the brands that we work with and help them stand out and drive performance increases month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. Um, but yeah, it's going from a nice to have to a must have overall. I love that. That's a great sound bite. <laughs> nice to, yeah, have to, to, end on, to have And to end on it too. Yeah. Didn't, boom. Didn't plan like, that. Didn't write that. it down, but uh, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Had you written it down, it wouldn't have come off as smoothly. That's typically yeah. what I find. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and just kind of sharing your wisdom, especially, uh, you know, doubling down on BFCM. Cause I know that um, by the time that this a podcast comes out, it's going to be very top of mind as it should be top of mind just to begin with. So I absolutely appreciate you coming on and hopefully I'll have you on here again. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. If listeners want to learn more about Waybreak, they can go to waybreak.co and everything I also talked about, we put in a webinar uh, that you can watch the replay. It's ungated. So nobody has to sign up for uh, enter their email or anything. So you can go to <laughs> bfcmwebinar.com and that'll redirect you there. So if you want to see like visual examples of what I talked about and like even some of our own client data, it's anonymized, but uh, you know, the percent increases that I'm talking about, I map that all out in the webinar. So you can go check that out at bfcmwebinar.com as well. I love it. That was a great plug. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. You have a, you have a great one and we'll talk soon again. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for having me. 